Hello and welcome to my uh, little mini documentary here about what I have learned over the last week in our uh, education um, technology course here at Cabrini. Um, we're going to call it My Week with Technology and Social Networking. All right, well, first, before we get into this, it's probably important to talk about um, where I was as far as social networking last week before this course began. Um, believe it or not, I did have a social network. I, I did not realize I had a social professional network, but I did. Um, unfortunately, it had nothing to do with education. It was built around my automotive business that I run on the side. Um, this is a website I built which um, has sold parts across the world via this PayPal account that I have. Um, I've networked with other people who have these cars and, and want to buy parts via this online forum that I moderate and administrate. Um, I've actually done things as, you know, far as like, you know, putting up different um, instruction things and, and stuff like that on this. So, I mean, I've done a lot of work as far as being the guy who gives out information and networks with people. Um, this is kind of car domain, sort of like a Facebook, but just for cars. Um, and I've been on this for about five years. So um, I have had this experience with, with networking and building a very vast network across the, uh, the country and the world. Unfortunately, this is um, the extent of my networking as far as school goes, as far as uh, working in Allentown and as far as being a teacher. Um, Email is about it. Um, we have been told in the past, even in other courses that we've taken in this program, that social networking from a teacher perspective is kind of a dangerous area. Um, it's bad news. You can really get yourself in trouble if you're not smart about it. And, and even if you are, you really want to limit the amount of um, exposure that you have. Um, even to the extent where I was actually kind of worried about these other things. So that's kind of how we, we went. That's how I kind of came into this as of last week. Now, read the wiki over the weekend kind of got into it and, and still didn't really know what was going on so uh, I was anticipating what we would see actually when we came in on Monday so Monday morning came along and um, here's Snacksville Elementary School that's that's where we've actually had the courses goodbye there and it's been taught by this fellow named Bill Bowen he's actually the third guy from the right there this, this gentleman right here fine awesome dude um, Sexville actually has the distinction of being the school in Parkland with the space shuttle, which I thought I had a picture. Oh, well, there it is. Picture of right there. A little mini space program going in the middle of Parkland. It's very awesome. But anyway, moving on. Um, this was our class. Um, we were told that it would be primarily about information technology and, and um, about that. The book, unfortunately, that was recommended for it is 10 years old. So luckily, um, we tried to kind of... Uh, look at modern stuff and things that weren't necessarily part of that book, which I can't even imagine. Um, I think it probably says things like, you know, someday we'll all talk to each other on the internet or something like that. But anywho, here's Monday's agenda. Monday began, sat down, and um, the first thought that we really wanted to go through was this Education 2.0 uh, idea. The idea that um, the internet is morphing into an, an internet version 2.0. I mean, it kind of it's it's been established. It's gone through its growth spurts, and now it's it's part of the world. It's it is what it, it, we are. Um, the internet is here, and we're not. It's not going anywhere, and it's no longer a novelty. It is life now, um, and it's changed a lot of things. Um, one of the most interesting things was um, this um, video that we had to watch on Monday uh, about the, um, the world is flat. Um, by Thomas Friedman. A couple of interesting little snippets here. One of them was right here. Let me see if I can find this. 2145. I thought I had this queued up, but I don't. Let's see. 2145 right there. No, I want 2145. Hold on a second. There we go. I think that's a really relevant 
um, idea and that you know that kind of happened while we weren't looking and for me personally it happened in education while I wasn't looking I was happy in my classroom doing what I was supposed to do and, and listening to data and things like that and this was happening um, moving on he kind of goes on to where his flat world theory begins, which is right about here. So what he was basically saying was that the world is now all one and, and people are closer together and this is the world that we are now educating children for. I think that was a very important idea and that kind of got me thinking and kind of showed me the importance of, of what we're doing here and, and what um, what important social networking is going to have to us as teachers. Um, so from that point on we, we thought of a couple other things but the main important thing was that we had to go home and make a blog and do a Twitter account. Um, we did our Twitter accounts at school. I figured I had my previous, you know, other thing already going, and, and why not add ways that I could um, better improve my business with Twitter? So I made a, a Twitter account based primarily upon that, and I, I went and, you know, started watching people like Conan O'Brien, and uh, I think I had Big Bird down here somewhere. I thought it was kind of cool. So I started looking through that. American Express, I don't know how that got there, but. Got home and uh, I figured did this at school. I would figure out what the blog was at home. Um, being somewhat of a nerd, <laughs> um, or maybe not a nerd, I, I really I'd seen blogs, but really didn't know what blogs were. I actually looked it up on Wikipedia, um, which was not helpful. But basically, what it said was that a uh, a blog is a continuing dialogue that you you put on on the web. And I thought, well, you know, I kind of have that. Um, on my web page, periodically, meaning every three to four months, I upload this little part in the middle, and that's kind of blog-like. So maybe maybe I actually have a blog here. Um, really don't though. I, I looked into it further and realized a blog is you know it has to kind of build on top of itself and searchable and and uh, easily updated on a daily basis and things like that. So I started looking further. Uh, I found a couple of different sites. WordPress seemed to be the best. That I could find um, for what I wanted to do so I went home and I got to work and that was the end of Monday now Tuesday Tuesday we came in first thing we did is we sat down and we looked at the blogs everybody had created the night before and um, it was a awakening experience for me here's one here's another one it's Jeff's, pretty nice, very educational. Even um, even this one was pretty good. Guy in the hat. So um, yeah, they're all kind of a uh, very educationally centered. And then um, we came to mine, which is what I came up with. Um, needless to say, I realized I, I kind of had to fix something up here, even if I just redid this. Kind of realized I sort of missed the the gun on this one. Um, so the rest of that day, we went on. Um, we talked about Education 2.0, which is um, the idea that you know education also is becoming more um, evolved, and we're gonna have to redo education basically to make it work with this new flatter world. Um, we looked at the um, seven habits of tech leaders. Hold on, let's go back here. Oh yeah. Yeah, I found this one very uh, enlightening. Go away. And when I was looking at something like this, I noticed here's a principal. He's got technology behind him, and I'm thinking, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. You know, Good-looking guy, technology. Um, where the, you know, to be part, to do this in your school, you have to be on top of education and, and things like that. Uh, we learned about the power of Twitter chats via this online um, 
dialogue. Yes. Go away. There we go. Um, and basically everything we saw in this area, basically in here too, kind of started to show us that it's really sort of important that, that principals have this technological background. Um, we went further and uh, we looked at Mr. Joe, Dr. Joe Mazza, there he is. I started to see kind of a trend here and the trend I kind of saw was that principals seemed to almost be um, marketing themselves almost like you would if you were a celebrity or something like that, where you have to have an image and, and you need to sort of look, have this online persona, this this engineered persona. Um, and that started, started to worry me, especially when I go back to something like this. So um, I started to, to think, well, you know, gee, I really need to <laughs> redo my website as a result of this. And um, so I found Weebly, which um, Heather was using, which is pretty cool. and. Um, came up with this as a result. And, and this was, I felt, a little bit better, a little bit more in tuned with uh, what I was actually going for. And, and not automotive, but you know, kind of markets me as this is my brain and this is what we're going to talk about. And you know, came a little bit more uh, blog-like. This is an actual blog. And I also went and redid my Twitter handle um, using the same idea, Mr. McGully's brain, put it in there. And um, you know, realized also I can't exactly be following if people can see what you can follow, you, who you're following, you can't have like Big Bird on here and some of the other things that I had. You, know, you need to have professional contacts. So that was kind of where we went on Tuesday. New we, new uh, site, new Twitter. Um, at the end, we had to talk about how we feel technology will be with us in the future. I said I really am amazed at the social networking and, and how you can use it to build a professional network, similar to what I had from an automotive thing, but also in education. So that's uh, kind of where we went with with that one. And then it was the end of that day. So on to Wednesday we come. Now, Wednesday, we talked mostly about um, internet usage, social and legal ethical things. We started with this um, copyright quiz, which I did very badly on I got a 37, um, which is kind of sad considering our last course was on law and copyright. Some of the things that stuck out to me though is I, I did not realize that there were um, situations where you could record things and you could show them, um, especially 10 days from a broadcast. I didn't really realize that or the three year thing for some other stuff, um, particularly uh, there's an example with a Seinfeld episode down here. I mean, three years, I, I had no idea. Um, Kind of leading from that, we got this online um, teacher's guide to copyright, which is very useful. I've looked at it a couple of times. Um, moving on from there, we talked about digital immigrants and natives. Um, I am, of course, not a native. Native refers to people who are born into education. Um, I'm one of probably the, the oldest somebody can be, or no, I'm sorry, the youngest somebody can be and, and not have been born when there are computers around. I mean, my first exposure to a computer was probably seven or eight years old. Um, I don't like the idea of immigrant. I, I, I believe it's more you're naturalized because I, I feel I'm pretty pretty good with it. Um, from there we went on to discuss online safety and the difference between SIPA and CAPA, two uh, things that, two walls that are intended to uh, protect children on the internet. Um, I did not realize what CAPA was I did not realize that this age of 13 thing had nothing to do with um, not being exposed to to uh, materials they shouldn't be exposed to. That is, of course, SEPA, um, the Children's Internet Protection Act. COPPA actually is simply to prevent companies from collecting information on students under age 13. That's why Facebook um, says you have to be 13 or older. I just wonder what that 13-year-old age was. I, I didn't really understand what was going on with that. Um, then we went and looked at some um, uh, AUPs, acceptable use policies for different districts. Here's Allentown's, which um, looks to be sort of you know moderate along the middle of the road as far as how um, how um, evasive, invasive it is. We then saw an example of an extremely not well put together one from a school district in Iowa, one that um, seriously I think is is going to probably cause some lawsuits. Um, it mandates how you conduct yourself while you're on the internet at home. 
which, um, while it's a good idea, as I said before in the beginning, it's a good idea to, to watch what you're doing as far as, uh, you know, putting yourself out there on social networks. It's not the district's job to tell you about that um, or even to, to mandate it. And some things that were federal law down here, like, um, you know, things with FERPA and stuff, they're saying you should. And that's just really kind of a dumb idea. Um, we read a reaction to that. And even um, people saying, you know, do we even need, do we even need to have AUP policies? Do we even need to have walls like this? Or should we just be teaching these people, should we be teaching kids responsibility? Because they will be at some point near a computer that does not have filtering technology. And will they be able to handle that? So from that point, we kind of switched gears very much and went on to cyber schools and charter schools in general. We talked about how charter schools cost districts um, approximately $8,000. Um, there's a sliding scale, so it goes up or down depending on how um, much money your district actually spends. But it is more than your district spends per student. And um, it's kind of ridiculous, especially when you consider cyber schools. That probably cost close to nothing to, to run. Um, there's no building to maintain. Um, there's no principal to watch over. There's just nothing that needs to be worried about in that way. Yet, um, they're not responsible for turning in the extra money that they don't spend. And that's kind of a problem. So, very interesting discussion on, um, on that. Blog entry for that evening was, what do you think keeps principals up at night? I said, I, I believe the biggest thing is the bring your own device idea because there's just so many different things that can happen, um, problems with bringing your own device. Um, it's a good idea, it's cheap, it's inexpensive, and it's already in the kid's pocket, so I understand the, the, the pros, but um, very, very dangerous as far as um, kids losing it, kids getting things stolen, texting to each other, um, teachers who are incapable of understanding how to use it, so you're gonna spend more time um, with those teachers just trying to log on to it or get it running or up and running than they are teaching, um, even though they should be doing that. So it's, it's kind of some issues there with, with that. Um, the other thing I talked about was the idea of teachers not knowing how to use social networking and coming back and biting them. And here's an, an example of that um, that I found. I think we've all heard about it, but this teacher who um, actually Payne from Georgia, who put pictures of herself on Facebook drinking and had a couple of uh, not so great words that she said while she was doing it, and lost her job over it. So. You know, I mean, from the teacher's point of view, there's that fear, but I think also from an administrator's point of view, there's the idea of, you know, what if you hired somebody and the HR department didn't see anything, but a year down the road, a parent of somebody says, hey, guess what I found on Facebook? Um, you know, and you're going to have to handle that, and that would definitely keep me up at night and make me use a lot of K-cups and drink coffee. So that was Wednesday. Then we moved on to our final day that's going to be represented here Thursday. Thursday was kind of a short day because I think we wanted to, uh, you know, spend time doing these things. We talked mostly about data, uh, not the guy from Star Trek, but um, the data that is used to evaluate us, evaluate our students, evaluate our school districts. We talked about how we're moving from a academic attainment model, meaning you know where a kid is compared to other kids at the same grade level. How close is your student to being a second grader if he's in second grade? To um, value added which is how much has your student learned compared to last year. Um, we talked about how that's a, a much more somewhat effective way of, of monitoring how effective a teacher is and, and how much your student has learned because you're actually looking at students over time. It's a growth type model, which is good. Um, ironically, I found out and I, I learned that AYP, which I thought was growth sort of because I thought you were comparing this year's third grade, the last year's third grade, this year's fourth grade, is actually you're comparing this year's group of students to the group of students from the year before. So even that is not a value added thing, which kind of confused me, but now I understand it. Um, we read this article to understand this. I mean, basically, that's kind of what I just went over. It, it kind of helped out a lot there. Um, we looked at the PVAS data site, um, which is really great because you can search your schools. I found out that um, I'm moving from Cleveland School, which is doing not bad, you know, not great, but on the border of doing okay as far as PVAS data goes, to um, Washington School, which is not doing great at all. And the ironic thing here I looked at later is that if you look at AYP data over here, Washington's getting a 35% proficient 
Cleveland, it's getting 29.9. Same with the, the advanced. So, in other words, the school I'm going into, by last year's standards, is a really, really good school in Allentown. Um, almost half the kids are making making above proficient. Where Cleveland, only a third are. However, with this new data system, we're not doing that great. So it's kind of an interesting concept. And again, I think a lot of this has to do with what I believe is that the lower the kids are in the beginning, the more growth you have to do with them, the better you're going to do on something like this. We'll see. I mean, I'm moving there and I'm kind of, uh, as one of my classmates said, I, I should be kind of concerned that this is going to change um, what my evaluation is going to look like. So kind of scary there. But moving on then, the last thing we uh, we did is we talked about um, we talked about, um, blah, 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 blah. oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was it. We moved on to um, making our final blog entry, which was what te technology do you believe is going to be most valuable for future administrators? I said kind of going back to this, data. Data is going to be the most important thing. There he is. But, um, you know, it's, it's going to be whether we want it or not. I mean, even if this is what our students end up looking like in the end, um, the people who tell us what to do, the lawmakers have decided that data is most important and um, I feel that it's important to use data. I believe it's an important tool but I think there's some danger in making it the only tool that drives our instruction which I believe it is now and will be later on. So we're gonna make this live since those thoughts are out there. There we go, we're publishing. Well, there we go. And um, yeah, my thoughts are forever immortalized on the internet. Thank you for sitting through this little um, summary of my learning and journey over the last week. Um, kind of on a different note, we're going to look at a dancing squirrel to kind of get over this. Because, you know, dancing squirrels are neat. I've never seen one. So, um, yeah, catchy. All right, thank you. Um, go away, dancing squirrel. Go, ah, uh, um.